So today we are looking at space planning or what we call in some areas floor planning for bathrooms. And uh, this is for interior designers who are looking to uh, figure out how to design a floor plan, uh, whether you're starting from scratch or whether you already have uh, boundaries in place uh, and you're trying to figure out how much space you need in between the toilet or um, and, and the wall and all of those little details. If you're not if you haven't found us from uh, our website and you're watching this on another platform, uh, there's an associated blog post that goes along with this video and you can download all the free card files and anything else that you need, including the rules of thumb for the um, uh, for each section. So uh, let's get into it. We approach space or floor planning in different ways depending on whether we have a set boundary to work with. Um, or whether we are free to, to define our boundary. So on the left here, uh, we have an example that shows really a predefined boundary. And a lot of um, us are stuck with a very small space uh, or what most of us designers really have is a, a leftover space, uh, which we have to design a bathroom in. So that's uh, one example I'm going to show. And on the right here, uh, we have dimensions that are useful for you if you're starting from scratch. So that means if you're building a new house, for example, and you're simply hoping for an amount of space really to start with, um, you know, just to know what your boundaries should be and so that you can, um, you know, use your little box and move it around. Uh, and that means that uh, you can progress uh, knowing that it will provide you, for example, with a full suite. So in both cases, you might find that the space is either too large or too small. Um, so use the rules of thumb in the associated blog post as a guide. And if you have less space, for example, um, aim for those lower boundaries. Or of course, if you'll need, um, well, if you have the lower boundaries, you'll need to prioritize amenities uh, based on your brief and regulations in your area. But if you have more space, you might decide um, that you don't want to waste, you know, buildable floor area. So, you know, it might not make sense to go out um, um, and, uh, you know, you want to create more of a sustainable footprint that doesn't go overboard, but still provides you know, a level of luxury. So you can use this floor plan here. And um, when making that floor uh, or making when making small floor plan or space planning decisions in a bathroom when you're starting your designs from scratch. Let's have a closer look at the individual floor plans and I can explain the reasoning behind a few things. I think the first thing to note with any floor plan, however, uh, is that you're guided by a brief and a design intent. So here our brief was to create a full suite. Um, obviously here we've had to combine the shower with the bath um, because we were we had a little bit less space. Um, but we still have the option of a bath and a shower, a toilet, our um, vanity with storage over. Um, you can see that here outlined and um, somewhere to hang towels and dry towels. So, uh, and it's quite light here actually, but we also have a 1.5 metre turning circle, which is about 59 inches um, in diameter. Uh, obviously in a smaller space, uh, just a slight comment is, it is allowable to get under the vanity for that turning circle. So um, that's just wanting to highlight that. So if you, uh, uh, ever wanted to or needed to uh, have uh, transfer your bathroom into an accessible bathroom for later um, it's always an option and um, I think that's it's good design it's good to think about these things for um, you know universal access it's just fair um, and moral it's also if possible um, it allows you to have flexibility and create properties that span the length of a lifetime. So not just when um, you're young um, or if you're, you know, if you are physically uh, a, a disabled or a, uh, uh, even older where, you know, you do need grab rails and things. Uh, it, it's a house that can be changed um, or a space that can be changed and altered throughout the building's life cycle and span so that it's not wasteful. Before I start, um, I just wanted to highlight um, that 
<laughs> this isn't a requirement in a lot of areas, but I've shown it here uh, just as an example. Um, and it's worth checking if it does apply to your location. And it's basically having the door opening outwards. This isn't preferable to everybody. And like a lot of people, including myself, I honestly don't like this. Uh, me personally, I actually lived in a house where um, somebody lost their finger because uh, the door did open outwards in line with regulations, but it was an altered house. It was a very old um, uh, terrace property, narrow terrace house, and uh, it was a shared house that I was living in with a few friends, and during a party, a girl lost her finger because she got it basically caught in between the door and the wall. So, not always ideal, <laughs> uh, but it's worth noting that, for example, Part M uh, for new builds and uh, in line with the UK building regulations, uh, your door on the ground floor of a WC uh, that isn't accessible, uh, WC must open outwards. So that is definitely a requirement to look at. Uh, you could also consider uh, just providing hinges that um, can easily be changed in at a later date, if that makes sense. So it's not always something... Um, that is totally required, but you might want to consider it before uh, or when making design decisions for future use. So as mentioned, in this smaller design, we have the shower over the bath, and that is really just to save space, really. So um, it really just means that you're going to be, um, you know, making better use of space. So um, combining elements, if you must, um, uh, if you had a much smaller bath, you could potentially uh, fit them both in here. Uh, having the towel rail, obviously, uh, it would be ideal if you had a lot more wall and you could ha just have a free towel rail. But typically, these are the problems you face when you've got a lot smaller space. So um, things like having to have your uh, um, storage uh, within close proximity of your um of your basin or vanity uh, and obviously just making the best use of the space that you have. Even in this proposed design, I've given you a little bit more space than, I mean, this bounding box is the minimum requirement for um, space in the UK. In, uh, so you could actually have a wall here um, in, in the UK and you could have a wall there uh, in the UK and there. So, uh, that is actually the minimum space that you need, like literally uh, the building regulations, uh, how much minimum space you need. But I actually find that it really isn't enough, especially if you've, you're a big person and your knee is hitting the wall. Um, it can get a little bit tight. Um, and I, I feel like um, if, you're, um, if you've got more space uh, to work with, this is a much nicer dimension um, to work with, which is... About, um, I think it's about 30 centimetres either, either side. So it's about one foot either side. So um, that is the preferable um, uh, dimension that I like to, and even though this is like the UK regulation. In the US and um, uh, Canada, Australia, that dimension is actually a little bit wider anyway. So we've got about 1.2 metres that it needs to be. Um I think when it think it comes to um, providing or locating your um, uh, toilet roll holder, I think it's just common sense within arm's distance. Uh, you, you don't want to be placing it too far away. Um, it's, you know, you've got to be able to reach it while you're on the loo. It's just practical. <laughs> so um, some people don't like, uh, and this is a real British thing, I think, that people don't like to see the toilet opposite the uh, opposite the door but you know in some cases you don't really have the uh, we don't have much of a choice because um, you can't move your um, uh, you, you can't move your toilet for example when your soil vent pipe is there and um, you know your joists are running in that direction and it's got to connect that way. If your joists were running in the other the direction, you would have to be like literally cutting through all of the joists. So it's not really practical. So, um, you know, sometimes that's not um, really viable. Showers should ideally be approximately 90 by 90 centimetres. Um, you can see 
uh, in the larger plan when we go to it, it uh, I've provided a, a little bit bigger. Um, but that is a really luxury size, 90 by 90. So that's about three feet by three feet. If space is tight, try not to go below 80 centimetres, uh, which is about 31 and a half inches because um, it's just not very comfortable. So here, because we've got a bath with the shower over the top, um, a typical uh, small bath is, a, is um, about 70 by 140 centimetres. So that's about 27 and a half uh, inches by 55 inches. But a standard bath is about 70 uh, by 170. So I've got a little bit wider here. And if you do, so uh, sorry, that's 27 and a half inches by 66.9 inches. And if you do uh, have a shower over a bath, try to go as wide a bath as you can because it's really tight. Um, and you really feel how uncomfortable it is showering in a bath. And most people use the shower more often than the bath, obviously. So um, it can just, you know, it's if you can do it, it's the most practical thing to do. Also, things like having a shower screen uh, that's permanently uh, secured there can be really obtrusive if this space is really tight. So if you're really, um, you know, if you didn't have this extra space, it can feel quite um, in your face, really. Um, so you could have like a folding uh, or one that folds back. So it's, you know, half the size when it's folded and then expen extends out to be a bigger size. So there are some space saving things you can do in a smaller bathroom. Uh, things like sinks and vanities are typically at a height of about 80 to 85 centimetres, uh, which is 31 and a half to 33 and a half inches. But taller people might find this a little too low and wheelchair users will find this obviously way too high. So um, it really is, uh, you've got to make a decision based on your brief and um, that is, uh, you know, it can vary depending also on your um, design ideal. If you're providing uh, the shower within a bath, uh, there's also, so baths, some baths can come in like this and that can be another really irritating thing when you're um, having a shower that you can't get close enough to the shower head. So obviously I've got a nice big shower head here um, that comes out past that. But if you're trying to shower on a slope, it, it's dangerous firstly and um, it's really not ideal. So the type of um, form in the bottom of the shower of the bottom of the bath is actually really important to when you're considering um, when you're purchasing your bath as well. Now let's look at the larger space. Of course, this is not a luxurious bathroom by all means, but it is a very comfortable one, allowing for a bit more space uh, in certain areas, um, and obviously. Uh, I mean, it's a bit more comfortable allowing for more space, but not wasting space for the sole reason of having more space, if that makes sense. So the same brief applies in regards to having a full suite. So separate shower, bath, if you can. Um, but here you are more free to let the design idea guide your layout or floor plan. So that it's quite a luxury in a way, at least from a designer's perspective. So what I mean by the design idea is um, obviously the design that is um, that you're following into the detail as um, uh, that's guiding the decision making behind your design process. So uh, if you're a designer, you would know what that means, that um, obviously you have a design idea that's guided um, and all of your decisions are, uh, are based on that. So um, uh, including the shape of the room, the space uh, and how much room you've got. So if it is, you know, it can be a really quite a utilitarian design. And because of that, you're being guided by modernism ideals. But um, in this larger design, uh, I've just created a, a real simple layout that allows for really practical things. Um, Obviously, an opening window, <laughs> you will be surprised in how many countries that is not actually a requirement in a bathroom, but a lot of people really do appreciate it uh, for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, somewhere to dry towels, not just hooks, I think is really important if possible. Um, and that is, uh, obviously, if you have more space to do that, that is very welcome in many cases. It's typically, a separate vanity is quite a luxury um, 
also helps with a design intent to really um, give you a bit more space. You can see here our wheelchair turning circle is, you know, obviously we have a lot more clear space without anything having to, um, nothing bounding into, into the space at all. Uh, I think the final thing I wanted to cover is the location of services. Um, and I think it's really, really, really important to, especially those of you um, who are, are typically working on new builds. And so this is where you would have this situation where you are free to define the size of your um, overalls. You know, when you're more free to de define the size and scale and shape of a room, um, you might also have the freedom to locate things like pipes. And I think it's really, really important. Not many people do know this unless they're practicing architects, um, but it's really, really critical that exterior walls, and this is our exterior wall because this is where the window is, <laughs> uh, obviously to the outside, but um, exterior walls, especially in new buildings, should never, ever, ever be penetrated with any kind of pipes, um, wiring, uh, or anything uh, because that is typically the thermal barrier and um, you can uh, if that's punctured it will um, uh, lower the thermal quality of your building and might uh, like allow escaping air and um, really can um, degrade the overall um, thermal quality of your building and if that's a new building it's really it's a big problem so never ever ever um, design uh, a wall that has been punctured. So uh, what I mean by that is if you did have your basin here, you wouldn't be putting your plumbing in the wall. You would have to build this wall out to allow for that plumbing to go to wherever the soil pipe is. So um, let's just assume we do, we've built out this wall to allow for the soil pipe and our soil pipe has been hidden in this wall. Um, what we would be doing is um, trying to hide that in a in a way that's been designed really beautifully rather than what typically happens is you've got the soil pipe there and the walls being built out and I mean, it's quite obvious where the soil pipe is because you've got this boxing in the room. So obviously this all needs to design be designed um, with uh, the overall design intent in mind and the brief in mind. But there are certain things that... Uh, you need to know, such as never, ever, ever penetrate the external wall. Um, and, um, you know, if you are designing a, uh, a, a around existing pipes, you might, for example, do what we've done here and build out this whole section and make it align with, you know, the boxing out of the bath, for example. So you might expect your um, soil pipe to be there and soil pipes will be going down to the drainage to uh, to um, they'll obviously all the liquid goes down but they also need to vent to the roof so they require air into them and so these pipes are important because they go up and down uh, so that's something to consider I know there's a lot to take in so always just realize that there's no perfect response. The perfect response is typically the one that achieves the brief and your idea um, or your design idea at the same time. And there are multiple ways of finding a solution to any problem. And that's what uh, makes you a good designer. So hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, space planning video in regards to bathroom specifically. And I'm Jo Crowback. If you'd like to see more of our uh, videos or blog posts, you can go to our website, www.idbs.online.